Yeah. All right, so we're getting a good workout here, pushing jigsaw in so we can figure out whether or not all the work we did with suspension is exactly what we wanted, or, or if we have to go all the way back to episode one, this is episode number 12 of this project, because if we're wrong and we did this all wrong, we're back to square one. And Ryan can't push and talk at the same time, because while he talks, this gets a lot harder. <laughs> I was wondering why you're breathing so heavy. <laughs> Good thing I got that chiro appointment tonight. Yeah, I got a deep tissue massage appointment tonight. I'm now we're going downhill. Me, me, me. So thus far on Project Jigsaw, we got our Ford V8 installed. To do that, we needed to move the suspension back four and a half inches. Which is a lot. Which we did. A whole new subframe, moved it back, moved it up. And now we got to see whether or not we did it right. Yeah, we, so far we're working off theory and jigs. And Tony made the jigs, so. So we're in pretty good shape, but <laughs> Ryan's hoping not. No, I'm not hoping not. <laughs> I don't want to be doing this work. It's been a lot of work. So what we're going to do today is use our alignment rack to confirm things. Because we're actually using a computer to confirm, confirm it, not some eyeballs that you know can be skewed. We're gonna measure it, make sure that statically we can adjust it to where we want, if we need to make any changes, where those changes are, and then figure out dynamically as this wheel moves, is it still, have we messed up the geometry or is it doing what we want to do it that way? Yeah. Oh, that's right. We need to get to work. <laughs> the first thing we do before any alignment is we gotta set the ride height. Typically, we would do corner balance as well. Yeah, but, but this thing's like not a full vehicle right now. So there's a kind of, we're gonna- we're It's just, irrelevant. Yeah, this is a waste of time. But we set our ride height. That is where you need to start before we do any kind of alignment whatsoever. So- I said that, let's do it. Probably over the body shop. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, we just got the sacred tome. <laughs> the official um, Porsche book of- Let's see here. Numbers. I don't know if it's even in here. It should be for, for ride height. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's in here. It tells you where to measure off of. Yeah, front axle I, I, height, I rear axle height. There you go. This video has been paid for and sponsored by Anchor. Check this out. Anchor.com Black Friday from November 17th to December 3rd. Biggest sales up to 60% off charging accessories and receive a free gift with purchases over $80. So check out their products through the link in our description down below. All right, so we don't know exactly where this is gonna end up being. That doesn't affect us too much for what we wanna do. We're just going to go off of rest of world sport specs for height and alignment and see how close we are. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Uh, yeah, we no longer have the point to measure from on the back for the ride height. Just like anything else, we'll just make up the rules as we go, I guess. Yeah, we'll work that out. <laughs> So I'm just setting up our road surface with the laser, just putting the laser on the top edge of our bearing plates so that when we measure down, we're not trying to. That's smart. Then yeah. we can measure straight down. Get a body. straight edge, straight to the laser. Yep. Straight as a laser. 158? Yeah. What's that side? What's the other side? <clears throat> get, your, get your head out of the way. 158. Dang, I did a good job with these coil levers when I installed them. Yeah, all right. Now I don't know where that is. There were 158 in the front. I don't have a notepad, so. Which is actually a little high even for USA spec. So we want to go off rest of world sports spec, so we got to bring that down about an inch or 26 millimeters to be precise. Do we want to get further than that? I think for this, the, uh, the purpose of this exercise, no. Okay. The purpose of this exercise is to go off specs anyway, so we could yes, tell we're not going to get off specs. Correct. That makes sense. After that? Yeah, I mean, rock. 
Huggy. Handy. Remember kids, lube it or lose it. As I missed the threads entirely. I only just found out that we have separate hotel rooms this weekend. He's I just found out that I had three boxes of crackers I got on Friday, and somehow over the weekend, half of the boxes disappeared. Wait, really? Yo, that, that, that cream cheese and chives? Yeah. Yo, give me one of those. You get the last one. <laughs> I don't know if I can catch that, that's pretty big. <laughs> I like how there's two sides to this car. Antonio's is eating crackers watching me do this side. <laughs> Pardon me. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, he's weird today. I don't know if I want to go on this road trip with him. We're going to Virginia Beach for a car show, Coastal Virginia Auto Show. It's this weekend when you're watching this video. Um, we're road tripping the slant nose the entire way there. I'm stuck with him every day for four days. I'm glad we have separate hotel rooms. <laughs> Stuck with me, that's an interesting interpretation. Because <laughs> I was gonna ask you which was the other wrench you used that worked. I'm not talking about Super Me, just talking about the actor. I thought too he was talking about actual Superman since we were talking about superhero movie, but no. How low did you go? Can you get to the flow? How, well, how much did you lower it? Um, it was like 24, that's especially right. when they're old and sloppy. Let me help you out. Wait. Do you not actually want to lube? Go ahead. No, I'm just trying to figure out what you were meaning by old and sloppy. Definitely not this guy. Mm mm. This thing's so freaking. Oh my gosh, that hurt my knee so bad. <laughs> I hit my knee on the corner of that. It was very unpleasant. <laughs> oh, it's a Monday, my dudes. We're at like 134. So it looks like it translated exactly. We said we wanted to go 26. We lowered it 24 on the spring and it lowered 24. So I think for today's exercise, that will be good enough. And we'll move to the back. Measure, we do not have our correct reference point in the rear uh, because we got rid of that. So, but what we do know is there's a certain amount of rake, um, about eight millimeters, say, um, when the front and rear are set right, if you're measuring off of this pinch weld. So we're just gonna set this to that. Um, and then again, for this exercise, which is, you know, it, it will work. I mean, it wouldn't be good for a track setup at that point, but we're just trying to confirm that everything's good. And we're well, about aesthetic. 150 millimeters there and 155 there, which actually- Five difference. Which actually, that's pretty good. Um, we were looking for about eight millimeters front to rear difference, we're at five, um, which again, if we were setting it up to actually drive it, that would be, we'd probably, we would correct that. Yeah. But for just confirming that our, um, suspension is is within, within where we want it to be yeah. this will work yeah yeah no i agree we don't want to waste time on things that don't matter especially since like we spent all the time to this thing fully dialed in to then be have weight added to it and stuff and then be right. wrong anyway so that's 154 it's one millimeter lower than the other side which Plus is the really close right like we're at like sport oh. height and that's 149 so yeah we are we are very close we're within a couple of millimeters all the way around of of being where we want to be. Not only that, like we're at sport height, right? And I can almost yeah. put my head underneath the car. And I don't, that's, that's too high. And we, my head's a good unit of measurement in this place. So we've already done it once in the rear. <laughs> <laughs> but All right, now for so exercise, we're good. It's time to move to the next step. What's that's the next what step? we're saying. The next step is we're going to put on the alignment heads and just see so how close says. we are. Yeah. Will you take bets? No. Boring. So the rears are 19, but we're gonna have to knock this down because 
We got staggered wheel diameters front to rear. Part of that GT40 vibe. E doesn't work very good. Here, I'll read it off. Harley Alpha 2987. Wait, hang on, hang on. This keyboard sucks. You gotta... This is the actual spec. For the actual should, spec? For what it should okay, be. gotcha. Um, we can just kind of ignore this maybe, I guess. Can we just pretend that's exactly what it is right now? Yeah, we're done. Video over. It's a level. And then you make it to the bubbles level. I know how to, I know how to, know how to read a I bubble. I know how to read a bubble level, sure. You grew up in the generation that used bubble levels and not electric ones. You know, just yeah. like that. Get it within range. Okay. And then tighten it back down. That's all yep. you gotta do. All right. The sensors. Uh, oh, whoop. There we go. Let's roll it back till it turns green. Or steer wheels as directed. Oh, brake pedal depressor. It's but, not gonna work. It's like we're gonna have a seat in the car. Oh, uh, we can't. Yeah, it won't work. There's gotta be a way we can Never do thought of that. We have, um, give me a hood prop. I'll go off the shifter and wedge it there. No, you're missing the point. What? Oh, we can't put brakes on. There's no calipers. <laughs> There's no calipers. We, we, might... we may not be able to do caster then. Yeah, you can't do caster, but caster's on the front, which we haven't messed with anyway. So yeah, for so that, now- that's fine, we'll skip that. For now, we'll ignore it. We have literally no calipers in the car right now. So there's literally no way we can do this right. So we're skipping the caster. We don't need it. Bypass measurement. Yep. Done. Rear toe. Yeah, the left one, I thought, I thought so. The left one's way, way, way out. Negative 2.37 degrees out. The right one really isn't that far off. It's still out though. It's, it's, they're both like. Right, yeah. Wait, how do you but do the, visual, the visualization? Our left camber is actually like Decent, in the green. Yeah, for the rear. The right's a little off. Yep. Oh, it's green. Nope, now it's not. It's, right. Oh, oh, it's, ah. it's close. <laughs> it's actually close, and we have done nothing. And actually, we can't, in our current configuration, adjust it at all. But the fact that we're pretty much within the green with zero adjustments made on the camber is pretty awesome. Close. I mean, our, it's, fl it's flickering green on and off on the right side. Yeah. So that's we're, a good omen. <laughs> yeah, our camber is is real close. And our camber will be adjustable soon, so that's that's yep. not a big deal. It's the being able to get the toe right is a problem. There it is, it's green. Oh, that's no, not. <laughs> there it is, it's green. By picking it up? Yeah, just a little bit. See, there it yep. is, it's green, so. We fixed it. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! Our rear camber is in the green on both sides without having made any adjustments, which is good because we currently can't make any adjustments because we don't have our adjustable control arms. But what that means is, right. All this stuff is actually right. Right, oh, right. Yeah, so if that, was all, if that was in the wrong spot or this bolt hole was in the wrong spot, our camber would be all kinds of wonky. Yeah. And it's within spec without any adjustments. Yeah, and that's that's like crucial too because like you think about it, we're in the green and there's like a one degree tolerance there, I think. Yep. One degree is not very much. <laughs> so with having made all those all. changes, we are in exactly where we want to be. Now we have to we have to deal with our toes still. Yeah, let's get our toe um, right. And so but we, we have that adjustable toe, that, that arms there. That toe is going to change the, the yeah. camber a little bit, which actually might get that side it, better. It, uh, it won't change it that much. Actually, make this camber side affects toe more than toe affects camber. Oh. This guy knows his alignments, just not alignment machines. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> I know old alignment okay, machines. Okay, boomer. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 there it is. Okay. There it is. Boom. That's the man. I'm just going to like loosely slide this nut Again, so it's not 100% perfect, but all in the green, which is what we were kind of after. Look at our thrust angle, buddy. Look at that. Wow. That thrust angle means the car's square, which means good things. Yeah. That's my, my, my take on it, not the scientific take. <laughs> Look at all these wrenches I use to try to figure out which- Every now and then, <laughs> sci science and Ryan line up. I even use the, uh, <laughs> I even use the standard wrench here. Yeah. Oh, like- You just love to see that. That's yeah, what you love the, to see. Right, yep. Nice greens all across the board, except for the camber cross camber. Now we fine. did adjust the toe and we've got so much adjustment there. There was really almost zero way we weren't getting that in. Yeah. So we're going to compare the length of what the toe arms are now to, to, to no, to a factory one Ooh. and just see how far off those points are or are not. I have a feeling we're a little bit longer. I, yep. But not so long that it's outside the range of the eccentric. Well, and that's it. We don't even have an eccentric in there, but at least we'll know which way to take yeah. that slot once we make that measurement. Mm -hmm. That's next. So while Tony is measuring toe arms, 
I'm gonna get the O2 sensor mounted in the slant nose so that uh, this thing will actually drive kind of okay for that long trip we're about to go on. We got about 35.7. Let's measure a factory one and see how close we are. This one's almost identical to that. That's the man. They're almost identical to these nuts. The factory control arm is from the center of there to the center of there, 36.5, 36.6. And from the center of here to the center of there, 36.2. So two or three millimeters, that's actually awesome. Um, I can't say how awesome that is. This one is, hmm, this one's a little shorter than that. So this is, I'll say 35.7. Um, but still that's maybe eight millimeters off, which is well within um, the factory eccentric adjustment, which again, we don't have. So with having had no adjustment on any of these points, we are, and uh, you know, now our thrust angle is right, our toe is right. Um, I, I, yeah, yeah, that just confirms that everything worked out really, really, really well. It's gonna zip tie this up out of the way for the moment until we get the car off the lift for a minute and it's gonna come back out and then go back in again. There's much stuff to do today. But now we have a way to uh, hook this up to the ECU and get some live readings. And hopefully it'll adapt instead of just being a flat tune. So now that we know everything's copacetic back here, there's one more major test that we have to do because we're not entirely out of the woods yet. What we're going to do is we're going to take the spring off of the coilover so that we can run suspension through its paces without having any resistance. And then we'll be able to measure and see what happens to the wheel toe and camber wise. And that'll kind of, that'll tell us that uh, things are actually okay or not. Cause right now, statically, it's fine. Right. But we need but to know about dynamically. And that's going to come down to, yeah, geometry. It works. I mean, unfortunately, we don't really know what value we're looking for. Look, you can change the spark plugs from out here. You can just reach in. I can change my spark plugs from here. Yeah, it, it's super handy. It's, it's not like a Porsche. You can just reach to the side of the body and like, boom, spark plug. All right, so we got the laser. Go ahead. Tony was already blocking the laser. So we got the laser That's here. That's you, oh, fella. Oh, it is me. Wow. <laughs> so we got the laser here marked right to the edge of that tack. Hanging on the wall. Cause what's important here is we're gonna put the car up, take the coilover back out, blah, 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 put it back in. The car's gonna be the exact same height again for the testing all this. So yes. that'll confirm that. Yep. So we'll, we'll check that again later in the video once the car's in the point it needs to be at. So you guys can check us as well. Me out in the shop doing stuff. Oh, I know. So just walking in and going, man, it's not what we discussed. Oh, that's in the locks. It, it is on the locks. There you go. go. Perfect. Now we'll bleed that. Oh, it's perfect. Look at that. I can just, just barely move the tire. I'm not sure that that matters, but go ahead. I like it. Hey, I found the wheel space. Raging in a different area of code right now. Have a little bit of the old strut tower in the way. That's why it won't drop down. Oh, we have to just kind of finagle around we it. We can, well, we can't finagle around it because it's now attached at the bottom. Oh. But we could just cut a little bit of that old strut tower off. Or we're gonna stick the, the two bolts out in the bottom to slide the strut out of the knuckle. Slide. Well, that's a lot of extra work. Do this. Does that do like it? I'm, yeah, I feel like I'm skating on this bearing plate, but we you got are. it. All right, cool. I mean, right. here, let's let's stabilize you, Brian. Yeah, you're making it you easy. Don't play a game. There you go. I won. Somebody I won. Commented, somebody commented on a previous video, video asking if you get like any kind of uh, hazard pay. Yeah, hazard pay from the government for I, employing I, me. <laughs> I'm, I'm still I'm making you work for that now. <laughs> I'm, I'm still waiting for the paperwork to come through on that. Oh yeah. <laughs> I hope this thing doesn't spin on me. Apparently it's keyed. That's nice. Yeah. I'm afraid. Wait. Yeah, it's a coiler. What do you have to worry about, Ryan? Uh, uh physics. No. Physics worry me. <laughs> oh wait, all of a sudden physics, <laughs> physics are coming into play again. Well, don't mix up the order here. We don't have to take the rest of it all. Yeah, that's good. And look, we can actually put the washer in that's supposed to be there now. I guess we don't need that either. No, just put that on. We just need that, yep. 
just so you know we don't lose stuff. Like worry about being too tight. Good, doesn't matter. They have a shirt on there called Silly Goose Academy. It's like a, it's like a, or a university, like a university shirt. There you go. I want that. So we have these light stands around the shop. We have so many lights and I love them so much. So I had the idea of tacking a big fender washer to a piece of rod so I could uh, set on top here, then use the cap for the top of the light stand to mount it to it. And then, now we have banners. They're just really wrinkly and they'd be out in the sun because they're in storage for a long time. I don't know if this is gonna work. You think Tony will care if I put banners on this car? That's his room too, so he doesn't get, his car doesn't get too hot on the inside. It's a win-win for everybody. It doesn't matter if you are accelerating, braking, turning, you want as much rubber in contact with the road as possible. Um, this checks out. <laughs> <clears throat> but things have to move around, and so it's not always possible to be all this flat. As the wheel moves up and down, this camber is changing, and that's simply because of the limitations of the geometry of the suspension. So you're trying to optimize contact patch and dealing with the compromise of everything else. So they have what is called camber gain. The camber is measured, with, er, um, it's, blah, it's pretty common knowledge that camber is the lean of the tire in or out. If this is negative camber, this is positive camber. This checks out. This is zero camber, which is ideally pretty much what you're looking for all the time. The reason that you see negative camber on cars that are set up for performance reasons is because you can only get so much camber change in a passenger car. So we're, again, riding that compromise. You want this, but the camber is measured in relation to the car. So if you think about your car is when it's flat, and this is zero, that's exactly what you want. But as the car rolls, if it stayed zero, you get positive camber, bad. So we put extra negative camber in so that it's closer to zero as the car rolls, which is where you're looking for the most cornering traction. Sticks out. At the, exp but that means that when you're rolling straight down the road, you've got a little bit of negative camber and that is going to detract from your available traction for acceleration and braking. Mm -hmm. So now what we wanna do is measure how our camber changes as the body rolls, and so we can see if it's within what we want. Sorry, I'm just make sure I get all this down. Did that Look, make sense? He's got, he's got a little hat. <laughs> We're gonna check the uh, camber from full droop to max compression. And to do that, Tony's gonna take the jack here and jack it up through its cycle. And I'm gonna use our digital angle finder to find the camber. But first, we're gonna zero it. And our, uh, our lifts, yeah, I already have it zero anyway. Our lifts uh, are perfectly vertical, so it's a good one to go off of. Slap it on the rotor here. Now we got a number to start with. We got 1.2 degrees. Do we, let's write some things down. That's what geniuses do. No! So we're starting at 1.2. No! Oh. He said, did he say the right down? All right. I, you're not gonna lose that. You're gonna lose that. Some point that's gonna get wiped off. What do we wanna come back to this at some point for some thing? We can transfer later. I'm good at transferring notes later. You're great at that, uh-huh. So full droop, <laughs> yep. we have, Negative 1.2. Right, yep. Negative 1.2. Degrees. Degrees. This is- Fahrenheit. This is rear. We no. can measure angle change here or just height. Well, let's do height and we can always check. We can change like height that. from here to here? Uh-huh. Yep, that way we can see what the rate is. Rate of change. Oh yeah, yeah. so we'll measure from here to the floor then yeah. we, we uh -huh. equal opposite to that yeah. point then. Where's your- uh, Tape measure? You mean the thing that I lose every single second of the day? I'm on the rotor, dude. Because there's a flange right here. change. Okay, that's fine. Like that the, works. Like the flange. I thought you were measuring some weird spot on the rotor. No, there's a flat edge there. It's perfect. It's, it's, it's 330 exactly. Okay. Let's try 330. I'm just going to write 330. Me too. Me too. Don't worry. <laughs> Stop. 
Okay. That's 340, still 1.2. Okay. Negative 1.2. So that, and that 10 millimeters there, we got three degrees change. Three tenths, but yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> three, I meant to say three tenths. Go. Go ahead. 0.5. So now we're getting the five tenths. We're going, we're going past bar 20? Woo! We're not even doing this right anyway. So, and I'm trying to think what is right, right? Because if right, you look at that right, arm, this. that arm isn't even straight. And if you're what, looking this for- This arm here? Uh-huh. What do you mean by it isn't straight? Because it's like cockeye and weird or? No, I don't, I mean, here it tilts down. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you're saying, yeah. Yep. You have to draw a line between right. where it meets to the knuckle to the center of the pivot, technically. Correct? Well, that, it, that, well it right. That, I'm trying to figure out, right. I'm yeah. trying to figure out which point out here we want to go off of. I mean, if you go off of that line, you're probably pretty close right now. We're probably too high. We measured the camber from full droop to full compression, um, and we referenced that against our change in height as well as angle. So now we're gonna put the wheel back on so we can look at both camber and toe as we go from ride height to full compression. What did we find though, so far? What did we find so far? Yeah, no, that, that sounds like a bunch of jargon. Okay, well, we don't know what we found. We don't know what we found yet. Right, I mean, we have numbers. The hunt is on. Right. <laughs> I didn't even <laughs> want All that is so we can figure out the rate of camber change as it moves through its suspension travel. No, I was between you in it. <laughs> I was trying to look at it, it ran past me. <laughs> like it was Black Friday and you're you about to help? get a TV and a good deal. With that? No, I got this. Okay, good. I am a strong, Here. capable young lad. There's, there's a lug bolt. Yeah, that made it worse. I figured it would. This is like a game so you can compensate their side faster. Tony's losing. Now we'll see if we get the car down to the laser. Like we said we would. Why is it wet down here? Sorry. <laughs> Why is it not going up any higher? Unlock the blast door. Clink. It's like putting the headlights up on a Opal GT. That too. I feel Slowly. like. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. A little bit. Oh. Whoa. I'm good. <laughs> the axle got wedged between the bolt there. Ah. And it sat okay. on the axle. That's why it didn't yeah. go down any higher. Right. Right. And now we gotta go up we, again. We gotta go up again, yeah. See, the fun, this is fun because there's just no spring in the coil over, just a reminder. Yeah. So we're trying to like space it. Okay, whoa. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's it right there, see? Yeah. Proof. I almost died. Just kidding, I was fine because I'm all, I, I, we were just talking about this earlier when I used the lifts in the front. I always stay keep my head below the, lane, the plane of death because I never trust right. these things. Yeah. Can it be in line with the knuckle that we measured off of? Because the longer, further out it is, the more it's gonna go. We're measuring, okay, where did you measure before? Right. Can you measure that? I think I can manage that. Okay. I didn't know because of the, I don't need your condescending tone. Sensor in the way. Oh yeah, no, there's a sensor no, in the way for sure. That, that was just for fun. The condescending tone was completely unnecessary, but completely well, I, I, fun. I, I'm gonna make a mark on the wheel, I think. Cause that's, not, that's gonna go with the knuckle anyway, so. Yeah. You could do the wheel, the lip of the wheel. That's true, let's do the lip, let's do the lip of the wheel. There we go. All right, so. Science. Normal, normal driving height, or, approximately. Yeah, or this driving height, yeah, 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 yeah. okay. Is, 615. Okay, you're gonna have to be the scribe now because I'm cranking this. Or never mind. Right, give me my on. notebook and pen. <laughs> oh, not using the board again the floor again? Give, give me my notebook and pen. Yeah. Don't knock on What's the height? 615. Alright. Ready? I'm ready as I'll ever, ever be. I mean I gotta go to two six twenty-five instead of six twenties. I feel pretty fast. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Stop! Drop! Shut them out, open up shop. Good. All right. 
I didn't actually mean to drop in the first place. All right, what's our camber in tow? Um, tow is 022. Get me with this two. Camber is negative two. So yeah. the camber is negative 2.2. Okay. The tow is 0.04. It keeps changing, so that's why. 0.04? Yeah. Or 0.4? 0.04. You said 0.5 the last time. I meant 0.05. 0 .5. I was trying to change. I was trying to change the number, and you started talking over me about how I said. All right. The so stop. Negative 0.22. No, it, it's changing. Hang on. Negative 0.25 for tow. Negative 3.1 for camber. Negative 3.3 for tow. Sorry. Negative 0.33. I speak Ryan now. Go ahead. <laughs> Negative three point five for camber. Ready? Um, sure. Negative point three nine for camber. Or sorry, you know. So <laughs> Negative three point seven for camber. I'm about to say that we don't need every single measurement filmed, like in the actual video, but we need to film every measurement for the best, the best <laughs> outtake. Sound like a. That sounds like a Street Fighter character. So based on all the measurements we took, including the ones using the alignment rack, we feel really good about all the suspension points that we moved, that they ended up exactly where we wanted them. But the one that we did not move is for this trailing arm. Currently, we have a temporary extension that makes it longer, and the pickup point is exactly where it was from factory. That was our biggest concern because that's going to change a little bit of the handling. And the main concern is we didn't know whether that would make it better or worse being longer because it's going to have an effect one way or another, right? Well, so the length is one thing. Yep. I, I think that the extra length is actually going to make it better. But yeah. the other thing was I agree. we moved our suspension up and mm -hmm. we haven't moved our pickup point up, which will affect anti-squat, but that's something we're going to look at as we move along. Yeah, we can't test that now until we're actually driving the car. However, given the uh, data that we found, I think we're pretty happy. I'm very happy. I'm yeah. <laughs> I'm as excited as I've been so far in this project. Honestly, it's the most excited I've seen in like a year. So that's something. Yeah. So now we know based on all the measurements that we've taken, camera curve is good. The work we've done so far is really good. But based on the toe curves and what we're looking at there, some other things, we still have more work to do. So we're bringing Roger with us to the show this weekend as well. So I 3D printed a base for him. So he's not just laying on the table. There we go. We got, we got Roger the base. And also, we have to uh, present our award apparently. So what I did was I mod modeled, go away. I modeled this base here. And I'm 3D printing that right now. And Tony is cutting out some pieces and dimple dyeing them because he loves dimple dye so much. So Elegoo just sent us the Neptune 4 Max printer. This is the first thing I'm printing on it the base for our trophy. So far, I actually really like this printer. It's very fast. Um, more on that later. All right, that just gives a really rough sanding really quick. We're gonna paint this bad boy. This trophy is going to be the coolest trophy there. Probably. Spent my life on the edge over here. Should've painted there instead of using the vise. Nah. Didn't work. O2 sensors installed and wired in by Tony, so we know it's done right, not, not by me. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to start up the slant nose, get it warmed up, and tune the idle to the EGO sensor and see what, what try, happens. Yeah, try and get that cleaned up. Idle and part, uh, part throttle. Because right now it's drivable, but it, it's it a little hiccupy. Yeah, it's, it's very rich, yeah. unlike me. That's crispy. So we have a bit of a mess with wiring here, as you can see. But it does kind of run, so. Oh no, it's been running, but yeah. We got work to do. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we're driving this thing to Virginia tomorrow morning, bright and early. It's now like what, three o'clock or something like that on, on Tuesday or Wednesday? So, 
this will be fine. Check back next week to see how all this pans out along with some other stuff that's coming up this weekend. And uh, we'll, we'll be doing a whole vlog on it, so it'll be fun. Yes. <laughs> he's not concerned. I'm certainly not concerned, but he's, he's concerned. Great. Bye.